My talk today is going to gravitate around stories. And what you just saw here is a snippet of a few visual stories I've told for the music industry. Over the past 10 years, I've worked on over 60 music videos involving hundreds of people in production. Oh yes, and just before we start, <laughs> I know I'm a bit overdressed, but here's the thing. Um, <laughs> I saw the dress and I bought it and then I realized I'm probably never going to wear it. <laughs> Because, well, I spend my days during, I mean, between the office, the editing room, client meetings, or on set, so it wouldn't be really appropriate. <laughs> and, um, well, maybe you can argue it isn't today, but uh, I decided I don't care. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about stories. We humans, we love stories. And actually, we are the only species that invent from scratch uh, stories to make sense of our surroundings. And, well, these narratives brought hundreds of thousands of people to build civilizations, cultures. And I'm sure you can think of someone, uh, past or present, who did something crazy, irrational, believing in a story. So, yes, we hear them since we're kids. Bedtime stories, news, family stories. We all have a good one in store. Um, plays, books, and films. And we filmmakers, we seek good stories. So, as I told you, I did um, a fair amount of music videos. And, um, well, maybe you can argue um, a music video is not really a story, it's a song with a, with a singer doing la-la-la in playback. Well, not really, it is a story. It's a story about the artist, about their dreams, their persona, and as a director, you want to help them put the story in their own light, and you want to make it right. So, I could tell you about all the times it went smoothly, uh, but as we're here to learn, I'm going to tell you about the time I struggled way more fun. So, <laughs> I had this collaboration going on with a Kenyan rapper, Mutoni Drama Queen, a great woman who had this great song about woman empowerment in Africa, in Kenya, and unlike some others, her story was a real one. It was about women making history and being erased from it, about them gaining financial independence, Organizing, organizing themselves, resisting oppression. And I had to find a way to put this story on screen. And well, um, I hated myself because in the beginning, all my ideas were influenced by this biased European point of view. And I had all these preconceived ideas and about like what uh, power would mean for African women. And I mean, I should have known better because I'm Asian, I mean, half at least, and well, I'm pretty familiar with all the preconceived ideas that people have over Asian women. So, I don't really like to say it out loud, but the first ideas that came uh, to my mind for this project was to show these um, woman warrior, Savannah style, standing up in the city of Nairobi. It was a bit cliche, right? <laughs> I think I liked understanding of the full picture and be able to really bring authenticity to the story. So, of course, as a storyteller or a filmmaker, you cannot have a master's degree in all the topics you're going to go explore during your life. Um, so, but you need to go through the process of research. And I as I'm no historian or sociologist, I needed to talk to the people who could really feed my story with the battles that these women were fighting. And finally, <laughs> I came up with a visual idea that I liked, that I knew would work on screen, and most importantly, that the artists loved. We were going to show in many different ways how Kenyan women always contributed to society in a very valuable way. And we decided we were going to shoot in this archival old library in the city 
it felt right for us to set these characters in this um, historical Hall of Fame because I believe it's where the story belongs and it was a way to pay tribute to them and to make sure they wouldn't be forgotten again. <laughs> we displayed three different scenes, mostly. One of them was the 1992 protest um, that happened there. Uh, it was the mother of political prisoners. They were on a hunger strike to free their sons and the police was sent to disperse them using violence, mostly. So what the mothers did, is they, they stripped down like this in front of the policeman and the policeman just ran away. <laughs> um, the other story was um, we wanted to show a woman thriving in male-dominated dominated sports. So we featured a um, world champion boxer, female obviously. And we also tapped down into the very strong biblical reference of the first woman, Eve. We showed black women biting apples. So, of course, you can interpret that scene in many different ways according to your own personal beliefs and your cultural background. But in any way, uh, it is a strong positive image that is meant to bring power and confidence to the people watching. So, I am aware that one film or one music video isn't going to change the world. But the point is to put something out there to the ones that had a feeling, had a gut, but couldn't really put a word on it. And it is my way to tell them they're not alone and to contribute somehow. So then we ha finally had this artistic direction set, so then comes the production. So we went to Kenya, obviously, and of course you never have enough money to do it perfectly, that's the game. Um, so you have to compromise a lot. And the point is to, I mean, you cannot win all the battles, but the point is to win most of them so the story can actually come to life. One of the, one of the small battles I really wanted to win um, ended up by putting, putting fire in the library. So of course we didn't burn the place down. The, but the thing is like I wanted some haze, some smoke on the picture because it gives texture, it shapes the light and also it would like create that aura uh, around our characters. But uh, we couldn't use a smoke machine because uh, the haze would damage the books. So negotiating <laughs> and negotiating, we ended up being authorized to burn some charcoal in the place. Um, instinctively, I would have thought that fire was more of a threat, but people surprise you. And um, in the end, we had some smoke, so victory. <laughs> um, production and filmmaking is set with obstacles. And the fact that it is so challenging to overcome them actually gives credit and weight to the project. And even if I complain a lot about those challenges, like maybe not today, but in my daily life, I complain a lot about these challenges, um, I still believe they are the best part of the project uh, because they make me want to do better and they make me want to push the, the story further. And everything you learn in the process is going to fuel future stories anyway. So, yes, we humans, we love stories. We create them, all of them. But they create us just as much. So we have a responsibility to be critical about the stories we hear and the ones we share. We need more diversity amongst the storytellers because they are the ones who will feed what you'll be dreaming about tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>